بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فإن شاء الله this is a small reminder to myself first and foremost and that is what we had heard this morning in the recitation of our beloved brother Sheikh Kamal Allah يحفظه ومتعه بالصحة والعافية أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْ تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Isn't it time that the believers, that their hearts tremble, fear, are humbled with the remembrance of Allah? This, this verse, Ibn Kathir, rahimullah, and the other scholars of Tafsir, they had mentioned the importance of humbling our hearts, making our hearts upon the dhikr of Allah. And thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the Qur'an. The dhikr of Allah, Qur'an. Qur'an is from the dhikr of Allah, but Allah specified it in order to show the importance of the recitation of the Qur'an and the importance of following the Qur'an. And similar to that, Allah mentioned about the dhikr of Allah and the salah in Surah Al-An'am. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ شَيْطَانَ أَنْ يُقْعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْدَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ وَيَسُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Shaitan wants to take you away from the dhikr of Allah. And the salah is from the dhikr of Allah. But Allah again specified it to show you its importance. The salah, the Quran, and all of that is from the dhikr of Allah. Because in the salah, you have, as the Messenger وسلم, said to Muawiyah ibn Hakam al Sulami about the prayer, he said, Innaha tasbihun wa takbirun wa qira'at al Quran. And it is tasbih, saying, Subhanallah. Uh, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la This is all tasbih And Takbir Saying Allah is the Akbar Allah is the greatest Wa qira'at al-Quran That's the salah Beautiful From the beginning to the end The dhikr of Allah And also dua And also From the recitation of the Quran Surah Al-Fatiha Umul Kitab The mother of the book The seven Oft repeated verses, Sab al Mathani. So the dhikr of Allah is that which should be regular to keep shaitan away, away and to keep shaitan at bay. So isn't it time? It is time. Why? Because any time we could leave this life. So it is time now. It is time now for us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the best times, throughout the day, as you wake up, Alhamdulillah, Ladi Ahyana. بَعْدَمَا أَمَاتَنَا وَإِلَيْهِ النُّشُورِ Thanking Allah for returning our soul. Because maybe the, the, your soul is not returned. How many people die in their sleep? And then when you go to sleep, بِسْمِكَ رَبِّي وَضَعْتُ جَنْبِي وَبِكَ أَرْفَعُ إِنْ أَمْسَكْتَ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرْ لَهَا وَإِنْ أَرْسَلْتَ فَاحْفَظْهَا بِمَا تَحْفَظُ بِهِ إِبَادِكَ الصَّالِحِينَ Asking Allah to protect your soul. That if you were to send it, to protect it. And this hifd, protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. For who? For the believers. Allah loves the believers and He loves to protect them. And He and He's their guardian. And He's their protector, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that comes also with you protecting yourself, guarding yourself with the remembrance of Allah. Guarding your head and what it contains from the eyes, the ears, the mouth, guarding the body and the limbs. Guarding the heart. As the Messenger وسلم, said to Ibn Abbas, God Allah's duties, He will protect you. God Allah's duty, God Allah's duties, you will find Him in front of you. You will find Him in front of you, helping you, aiding you, protecting you. And it's so true. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who sends His angels naam, as an aid to the believers. An aid, naam, the angels protecting you. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So guarding Allah's duties from that is the dhikr of Allah. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Such that the tongue is continuous upon the remembrance of Allah. لَا يُزَالُ لِسَلُّكَ رَطْفًا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ The Prophet said to the man who asked about advice, he said to him, make sure your tongue is moist with the dhikr of Allah. And from the dhikr of Allah is this beautiful prayer. This beautiful prayer of Salat al-Fajr. Because as you come to the masjid in the morning, and each step you take, Allah raises your degree. 
each step you take Allah forgives your sin and the angel send in supplications upon you until you are in the prayer and when you are in the prayer you say Amin as the Imam says Amin your previous sins are forgiven because that is the time the angels say Amin the one who says Amin alongside with the angels say Amin and the scholars explain that saying with the Imam saying Amin the previous sins are forgiven as you come into the masjid and you say Allahumma ij'al fi qalbi nura wa fi sam'i nura wa fi basari nura wa amami nura wa min khalfi nura wa amami nura wa an yamini nura wa an shimali nura wa min fawqi nura wa min tahti nura Allahumma a'tini nura Oh Allah give us light in front of us, behind us, right, left, above, below light I asked Shaykh Ubaid al-Jabri about this, he said it means guidance, Oh Allah give us guidance Oh Allah we need guidance because anyone can slip how many people have come and gone how many people have slipped how many people their feet Yani, they went the wrong way because shaitan will come to you from doubts and desires from doubts if you don't have ilm you will not be able to repel the doubts if you don't have taqwa you will not be able to repel the desires you will fall into the desires and they are strong that the Shaitan tries all his but the, his might or his way and his devious ways in order to lead you astray. They are strong if the one who is weak. But the one who is strong, they are weak. The one who is strong upon taqwa is able to repel the desires. And the one who is strong with ilm is able to defeat not just one per- shaitan, a thousand devils. As Shaykh Islam Alhamdulillah mentioned, one alim can defeat a thousand devils. <laughs> Allahu Akbar because the shayateen they are weak if you have the dhikr of Allah the, the shayateen you have weapons against them and from the weapons is the dhikr of Allah from the weapons is your Quran reading ayat al-kursi from your weapons from your weapons is reading is reading surah al-baqarah in the house shaitan does not come in a house where Surah Al-Baqarah is recited. From your weapons is the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. Before you sleep. Before you sleep as well, Ayat Al-Kursi. Ayat Al-Kursi after every prayer. Between you and paradise is only death. So Quran is, is powerful, Allah. Quran is powerful. In the morning and in the evening. The Prophet said, whoever says them three times, it suffices him. It suffices him. It's sufficient. And many problems happen from يعني, people getting <clears throat> ain, evil eye, magic, a lot of, and jealousy, people. A lot of it is because of, obviously, the weak iman and people fall. And pe- people not doing dhikr of Allah. Not doing the remembrance of Allah much. And Allah said, Udhkurullah Remember Allah much. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Those who remember Allah much, Allah is prepared for the great reward and forgiveness. So he said much. وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ Male and female. So remember Allah much, Allah is prepared for forgiveness and a great reward. The Messenger وسلم, when it was said to him, the Mufarridun, they have gone far ahead. Those who have been given wealth, they give charity. So we are poor, we don't have that wealth to give charity. So the Prophet said, in order to catch them and even excel them, then remember Allah much. Remember Allah much. Like for example, the Messenger وسلم, said, whoever says, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al mulku lahu al hamdahu wa ala kulli shayin qadir. A hundred times a day. He will come Yom Al-Qiyamah. Nobody will be like him. Yani in, in excelling, in, in, in reward. Except somebody who did similar to him or more than him. Yani in other affairs. So the dhikr of Allah necessitates say, yani calling upon, uh, necessitates recitation of Quran. Quran, even if it's one page, don't leave Quran. Because Quran is that which will give your heart contentment. Allah bi dhikrillah 
تطمئن القلوب اذا ما شاء الله ده حاصل كنت قران dont leave it don't leave a day sahaba will not leave a day they will look at <coughs> but as we live in this dunya in this life there's lots of preoccupations people are busy and shaitan would like to make you busy you're sleeping he's planning planning what is going to how he's going to slip you next or how he's going to make you slip next and so with the recitation of the quran at least it gives your heart some light gives your heart some contentment and also makes you focused because when you read the quran it has the speech of allah the quran is the speech of allah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding you and me and you see his authority you see his quwa his power and his might allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he speaks he speaks with authority he speaks with the you can you can read it you can feel it you can that this is that this is from nobody but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no man could have written this but rather it is all from allah and that verse subhanallah thereafter talks about the the people of the book whose hearts became hard because they left the dhikr of allah and even those who went extreme from the from the priests and rabbis this rahbaniya where they became extreme they had this abstinence of the dunya and then uh, they actually went extreme in that they didn't actually safeguard it because they said you can't get married you become celibate you can't do this and they took it into extremism they had extremism and so they couldn't uphold it but rather the messenger وسلم, showed us the balanced way now he, he got married and he showed us that this is from the sunnah his sunnah alayhi salatu wasalam and take your affairs of the dunya no doubt don't forget the upper hand is better than the lower hand now so that you can feed your family and feed your, your children but the most important is that you don't forget that your focus is for the akhirah that we've been created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ibadah is not just in a masjid ibadah also when you go out when you go out the masjid and you're doing dhikr of Allah ibadah dua when you're visiting relatives and you have intention even in your interactions even your sleep you can make it rewarding if you intend that by this sleep I'm going to strengthen myself to worship Allah better so there's lots of ways to reap the benefits of Allah. Sari'u ila maghfiratin. Seek or rush to forgiveness and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rush to that because that is what we have to compete with. More so than anything else. People are competing with the dunya. Yes, halal is good. But also the haram is clear. And the halal is clear. The person live the dunya in a halal way and he is careful of the doubtful matters for whoever keeps away from the doubtful matters he's free from blame in terms of his deen in terms of his honor as in the hadith of Nu'man ibn Bashir anhu al-halal ubayyin wal-haram ubayyin wubaynahuma umur mushtabihat la ya'lamuhunna kathira min al-nas faman ittaqa shubuhat faqad istabra ali deenihi wa ibdi he's free from blame in terms of his deen Allah will not blame him He's free from blame in terms of his honor. The people won't blame him. Because he kept away from the doubtful matters. So living the halal life, alhamdulillah, this is khair. But upon the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such that your tongue is moist. When you meet each other, supplicating for each other. Dua is ibadah. And we used to see this always with the ulama. When you see them, ahlan, marhaban, kif ha, where's your mouth, kif umurkum. Careful Abna, careful making so much, يعني, asking so much about the family and also dua. Allah Fadak, Allah Allah give you good health, good and well being. And sometimes you meet some brothers, mashallah, it's just salam alaikum, alaikum salam. That's it. It's just, you know, build the love between each other with the duas for each other. Even in the ghaib, even the unseen. <coughs> And remember, when you make dua for your brother in the ghaib, it is said by the angels, and same to you, and same to you. 
This is all from the dhikr of Allah that you're remembering your brother Naam for Allah's sake. You visit your brothers for Allah's sake. This is khair. And this is a good reminder that you be with each other. Ta'awanu ala al-birri wa taqwa Cooperate with each other from birr and taqwa. We live in the life now we're so busy. People are busy with the phone, with the internet, with so many social outlets. People hardly do dhikr of Allah. And probably pick up more times on the phone for social reasons rather than for the Quran or for the remembrance of Allah. And we're all to blame. I mean, no, no one is perfect. We all make mistakes. And we all fall short. But we do our best to remind each other that this Quran, put it in your phone. And keep keep a track. Keep track that the Quran is with you always. The Sheikh Saif Ozan used to say, keep a, a small copy of the Quran with you. Wherever you are, maybe you're waiting maybe for something. You can pick it out and read. And that will help you as well throughout your day. But now, alhamdulillah, we have it in our phones. It's easier. You can just read it straight from the phone and remind yourself na'am, of the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the dhikr of Allah, alhamdulillah, is that which will aid the person, keep, keep the shaitan at bay. And also aid the person to keep, to be focused. To be focused and help the person as well to be upon ikhlas. From the adhkar, the Messenger would say in the morning, the Sayyid al Istighfar, morning and evening, Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha ila anta khalaqtani wa ana abduka wa na ala ahdika wa adika mastata'at. A'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'at. Abu'u laka bin i'matika alayya wa abu'u bi dhanbi faqfirli fa innahu la yaghfiru al-dunuba illa ant. This Sayyid al Istighfar, you recognize that Allah. Allah's favors upon you. You recognize that Allah is the one who forgives. And He is the one you're calling upon. And you recognize your sins and disobedience that sometimes one may fall into because of our weak nature. Yes, Khuliqal Insan A man is created weak and he falls short. Maybe he has taken the rights of someone, maybe fallen short in, in the affairs uh, and that which Allah has commanded. So, we are human, we make mistakes, but Allah has put for us istighfar, forgiveness. And how great is that the person does a hundred times a day istighfar, as the Messenger Sassim would do. So that is a beautiful dua, morning and evening. And also there is a dua for protection. Allahumma as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah, fi dunya wal-akhirah. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal-afiyah, fi dini wa dunyai, wa ahli wa mali. Allahumma astur awrati wa amin rawati. اللهم احفظ من بين يدي ومن خلفي وعن يميني وعن شمالي ومن فوقي وأعوذ بعظمتك أن أغتال من تحتي Asking Allah for protection from the right, from the left, from the front, from behind, from above, from below because that, how many, how many times you hear a man's walking and something fell on his head this is protection, this dua, from above a man's walking, a car comes and, and hits him, Allah forbid it should happen to anyone Protection from in front, protection from behind, from the right, from the left, and also protection from shaitan. Because he's coming from directions, all directions, trying to come to get you. And whisper, he's going to try and get you with his whispers. And you can catch his whispers. So be focused in catching his whispers and replying it with the dhikr of Allah. Because shaitan is weak when you say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim He's weak. He goes small. So small. Rather than reviling him, say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim So with this adhkar, Allah said, Al-Afwa wa al asking Allah for well-being. Well-being. Al-Afya. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives, that is a gift from him. That's a blessing from him. It makes you good health. You have good health. Say that morning and evening. Saying after Fajr, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Adada khalqi wa radha nafsi Four statements, if you say it, it's like you've done dhikr all the way to sunrise. Say these four statements three times. Subhanallah bihamdihi adada khalqi. The amount of times is his creation. The amount of times is the weight of the arsh. The amount of times is the ocean. Subhanallah. The amount of times. Of his speech, sorry. 
and his speech, even if the oceans were to write the speech of Allah, they will be exhausted before the speech of Allah is exhausted. So the amount of times as his as his speech, Allah, this is this is this is great. That is a great dua, amazing dua you say in the morning. And likewise, as you come into the masjid and you say that dua, don't forget, especially Fajr. A'udhu billahi al-azim bi wajhi al-kareem sultani al-qadim min al-shaytan al-rajim. That's specific for Fajr, as some of the scholars mentioned. Then you can add Bismillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Allahumma aftah li abu rahmatik. This one for all prayers. But that one day in the morning, as you say, the Prophet said, if you say that, shaitan will not harm you that day. And you'll be protected right into the evening. And if you pray Fajr in Jama'ah, فَأَنْتَ تَحْتَ الذِّمَّةِ اللَّهِ You're under the protection of Allah. Subhanallah, that's why these two prayers, Fajr and Isha, if you know what's in their reward, you'll come crawling. You'll come crawling. Imagine coming from your house on your <laughs> hands and knees. This is shows you the, the great, immense reward for these two prayers. Make your life around the Salah. Don't make the Salah around your life. Because when you make your life around the Salah, you will be, inshallah, from those people, you will be from those people whose heart is connected to the masjid. And as the Messenger وسلم, said, from the seven of those who will be, seven categories of those who will be under the shade that Allah creates Yom Al Qiyamah, will be Rajulun Qalbuhu Mu'allakum Bil Masajid. A man his heart is inclined to the masjid. Shaykh Ibn Taymiyyah said, as he leaves the masjid, he's looking for the next salah. So actually, he's actually thinking about the next prayer. He's not actually heedless. He's not ghafil, he's, he's concerned and he wants to get to the to the next prayer. Praying Salat al-Duha is not, is not difficult. Five minutes Duha prayer where you, it's as if you have given charity for every bone in your body. How many bones we have in our body? More than 300 bones? 360? For every bone in your body you give charity. Sadaqah. Subhanallah. Just two rak'ahs, light rak'ahs. You do it in the morning. This is khair. And if you did it after praying Fajr in Jama'an, you stayed sitting in your place. And then you prayed two rak'ahs after sunrise. Then subhanallah, you had the reward of hajj. <laughs> this is complete. Sahih. Complete. Taman, taman, taman. This is authentic now. Sahih. We don't know how, but subhanallah, the Messenger Sallallahu mentioned it in an authentic narration. And this, you think, oh, of course, there are different levels of Hajj. There are those who do Hajj, they have nothing. That is the only money they have. And there are those who, have, who do Hajj, يعني, and they have, and they are, there are different levels. One time we went to uh, Masjid Quba with Sheikh Ubaid al Jabri. Uh, he used to love to go to Masjid Quba for Fajr. So we call in the morning and say, Yalla, 10 minutes, be at the door. And we'll go to his door and wait there. And he'll come out. The Shaykh is blind, subhanAllah. Yani, I think he has so much insight. And subhanAllah, we take him to Masjid Quba. And he would say, as the Messenger said the hadith in, in Sunan Ibn Majah, Man salla fi masjid al Man salla. There's one that mentions Raka'atayn. But anyway, that one, the Prophet and prayed Raka'atayn. But the one that mentions Sunan Majah, Whoever does ablution in his house or purification in his house and then he prays a prayer in Masjid Quba, in Masjid Quba, he will have the reward of Umrah. And you know Umrah is not easy. You get up and you go, oh, you have to go to Umrah. And but two rak'ahs in Masjid Quba, even if four rak'ahs, three rak'ahs, because it's any prayer. Could be Maghrib, could be Dhuhr, could be Asr, could be Fard, could be uh, voluntary. Any prayer that you pray in Masjid Quba, then you will have the reward of Umrah. And like I said to the Sheikh, yani Umrah, Umrah is like, you know, no sahad. You get up and you do your ihram, you do your talbiyah, and you go all the way. Four hour drive to Mecca from Medina and from the brothers who come in from here is probably, you know, the, the 12 hours. In, from the beginning to the end, yani maybe a six hour flight and then the rest of the six hours of preparation to get there. So I said to the Sheikh, yani Umrah, yani 
how do we understand this? كيف نفهم هذا الحديث? So he said the Umrah is different levels. <laughs> there are people who come for Umrah, obviously they're spending their wealth, they're spending their, their energy, their self, their time, their, and they left their families behind. This obviously is a higher reward of Umrah. <clears throat> but this one here, the Messenger Sallallahu said it, this is a virtue, and we believe in it, and we affirm it, and we, and we accept it, of course. So it's Umrah. And likewise, this one here, how many people actually do this, these two rak'ah? They are staying in their place where they were do, and doing dhikr right until sunrise. And then you find actually very few people do it. But if you do it and you, and la shak, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger awesome, said it. Alhamdulillah, we accept it. That it is complete, complete, complete. How? We don't know. But we leave the reward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We just do. That's the, uh, the asal is do. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts it from each and every one of us. Naam. So pray Salat al-Duha. This is khair. This is khair. Anything that you do, first and foremost, make sure the obligatory is intact. Then the nawafil. Then the sun, sunnah prayer, sorry. And then the nawafil. And the sunnah prayers to help you protect your fard prayers. Because shaitan will come to you to the salah, take you away from the salah. He will start with the sunnah prayers and then thereafter the fard and even in the fard he will try to lead you astray not to complete the fard properly you need the ruku the messenger sallam said the worst thief is the one who steals in ruku in the sujood don't do sujood don't prostrate like the dog in the sujood don't look around like the fox don't go down as the camels go down and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you Follow the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so follow his sunnah in the prayer and outside the prayer likewise. So going back to the dhikr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, morning adhkar and evening adhkar are so important. From that is seeking refuge, seeking refuge with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. A'udhu bi kalimati lillahi tammati min shari ma khalaq. Seeking refuge with the complete words of Allah from the evil that he has created. Three times in the morning. Three times in the evening. One time we were going with Sheikh Ubay to Mecca for Umrah. And uh, we took our families with us. And subhanAllah, Sheikh is so, يعني, uh, so, so kind and generous. You know, he's, uh, subhanAllah. He said, uh, because we have a fa- families, we stop by. Stop by Istiraha, like a petrol station with Istiraha. You can hire these rooms for a few hours and rest. Usually, I, I, I go straight to Mecca. Usually, I do say. But the Sheikh taught me that time you have to look after your families. They have needs. Let them rest. <laughs> so, we, we stayed over in Stiraha. We stayed inside. And he said, don't rush them. Let them tell you when to go. I was thinking about that's going to be a bit hard because... <laughs> When you say that to the family, usually the women, if you say that to go, is they take their, you know, they have need, but it, you don't want to get to Mecca, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you want to get to Mecca. So Sheikh said, no, 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 wait. Let them tell us when. So I learned something there that, that you be patient. You have to be patient with families. You have to be also give them their time, give them their rights. And we rested there. And then he said that dua a'udhu bi kalimati lillahi tammati min sharri ma khalaq. And he mentioned the hadith of the Messenger of Anyone who goes to a manzil, a place, and he says this, then nothing will harm him in that manzil. And this is a one-off. You say it once, in a, if you go to a, a place that is it's not your residence, but you're passing by maybe, or you sleep over that place, you say that nothing will harm you. No scorpion, no snake, no <coughs> anything that's in there, not harm you. SubhanAllah, one of the scholars in the Haram, this was mentioned by one of the Mashaykh, that uh, and as far as I remember, it was uh, Sheikh Muhammad Amin al-Shamqiti, rahimahullah, that uh, back in the days, Medina was not like now. The Haram was, you know, not, uh, was now, SubhanAllah, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, it's uh, well looked after, it's very clean, very, but back in the days, you, you might find a scorpion. On the ground. And that's what happened. One of the students found a scorpion. And actually it was the sheikh. He found a scorpion. And he stopped it. 
<laughs> he caught it and then he he continued his dars, finished his dars. And then afterwards, he said to the one of the students, "I need to take it outside." <laughs> <laughs> Take the scorpion outside, and obviously, obviously students don't want no one to touch a scorpion. <laughs> they think they're going to get bitten, you know. And those scorpions, no, 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 not any scorpion. It's a black scorpion. Yani, you can see that is probably got venom. It's got, and even it's scary. Yani, when you look at it, it's scary. <laughs> so the sheikh said, "Why are you afraid? As long as you say your du'a, no one, nothing can harm you." Say, I'll be kalimat in the time, Matim Sharima Khalaq. Nothing can harm you. Why would you want to be a. Why are you afraid? I mean, that's a test. Now, the person said it. Now, does he believe it? <laughs> you know, <laughs> take the scorpion outside and lie in it. Another dua is Bismillah, the delay of the room asked me, Shay, until the order of his Sama, who was Samir Alim. Three times in the morning and three times in the evening. Again, nothing can harm by the name of Allah, whether it's in heaven on the earth, and He is Samir al Alim. He is the all hearing and the most knowledgeable of the all. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, saying that dua for protection again. The adhkar are beautiful, Allah, because they remind you, even when you're going on your form of transport and you say the dua for riding a beast or riding a car, and you're going on a car or train or plane that beautiful dua of asking Allah for forgiveness and, and recognizing this this uh, transport Allah has provided you with and then till the end with the dua of Ali the, 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 the dua that Ali reported from the Messenger of Rukub al dabba or going on a form of transport and at the end of it, the Prophet would smile. And Ali Radhanu smiled. He said, they asked him, why do you smile? He said, because I saw Prophet smile, so I smiled. So then they asked the Messenger, so I said, why do you smile after saying this dua? And he said, because Allah loves those who say, li, fa innahu la dunuba illa. because Allah knows none can forgive but him. And the dua for traveling as well, asking Allah for protection for yourself and your family that you left behind. The dua that when you even leave your family, I leave you in the protection of Allah whose protection is not lost. And they say, I leave you in the protection of Allah, your deen <coughs> and his trust and in having a good end. <coughs> a man may travel, he may not come back. That may be a reason for him not I need to die in that particular land. So that dua as well. The dua of going in the masjid, leaving the masjid, the dua of entering the home, saying Bismillah. <coughs> so that shaitan does not follow you. The dua of leaving, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Which is, inshallah, hasan li shawahid. The dua of that even shaitan can't, can't get you. Because you're always on the duas, on the adkar. You're always, and you're protecting yourself to the best of your ability. Because you know it's a battle. Mm-hmm. It's a battle between you and your shaitan. Everyone. Everyone has a qareeb who's going to follow him. Wants to lead them astray. It's a battle. It's a daily battle. The dua of when you're doing a good deed, the Prophet will say, Allahumma la sum'a wa la riyah. I'm not doing it to show off, nor am I doing it for, to be heard. I'm doing it for Allah. This is for ikhlas. Allahumma la sum'a wa la riyah. The dua at night for ikhlas. Allahumma ni'udhu bika an ushrika bika shayin na'lubu. Astaghfiruka libada a'lubu. Seeking forgiveness in falling into, yani, uh, uh, falling into shirk. Unknowingly, and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, and seeking refuge from falling into shirk un, uh, uh, unknowingly, uh, knowingly, where you protect the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is in the, in the night, the Prophet would say that, seeking protection, because a man may say, he may start an, an action, and then show riyah comes in, and riyah is like. Uh, a black ant on a black rock in a dark night. Meaning, it's hard to detect. It could come, and you don't even know it's coming. So the person as well, A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim. A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajim. Be focused. You go back and check your action as Ibn Al-Qayyim Rahimullah said, before you do it, while you do it, after you do it. Why? Because you want that action to be accepted. You want that ibadah to be accepted. 
So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who remember him much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who are sincere in that which we say and do. Life is short. It's going by very quickly. The days are passing by. The nights are passing by. And, the, and we are drinking from our, the, the cup of life. You know, if you have a cup of water and you drink from it, it gets smaller and smaller. That is what we're drinking from our days. Our days are getting shorter and shorter. And our reckoning is looking us. Our reckoning is in front of us. Our accountability is in front of us. And everyone is going to go to the next life, tasting that, that first stage of the next life, which is tasting death. Everyone has to taste it. And everyone has to pass by it. But for the believer, it's like the trickle of water. The soul lives in like trickle. And having good opinion of Allah. This is also from the dhikr of Allah, the heart, that has a good opinion of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who rewards. Allah is the one who protects. Allah is the one who will aid you and forgive you and raise you and honor you. And Allah is the one who debases as well. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who gives life and he gives death. SubhanAllah, yesterday or the other day I heard, I asked my brother, what's your name? He said, Abdul Mumit. Allahu Akbar. Abdul Mumit. <laughs> we have Abdul Hay. Allah is Al Hay Al Qayyum. But this brother is the Abdul Mumit. I said, oh, Allahu Akbar. That's a beautiful name because why? It reminds you that Allah is the one who takes life. He takes life. And also, if somebody wants to harm you and you tell him my name is Abdul Mumit, you tell him what it means. I think he will go away. <laughs> so that's a beautiful name, Abdul Mumit. Allahu Akbar, Abdul Hay. These names are beautiful. And these names remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make, give us life and he will take our life. But we go to the next stage. It doesn't just stop there. The kuffar of the mushrikeen, they would come to the Messenger of Allah and they would get the bones, and crumble them in front of his face and they would say, Yani, will Allah give us life? Will Allah bring this to life? Wahiya Ramim. And Allah replied, Qul, yuhiyiha alladhi khalaqaha awwala marra wa huwa bikulli khalqin alim. Allah will bring it to life as he created in the first instance. Naam, and he is aware and knowledgeable of all what he had created. So Allah commanded him to say that. Yes, they, re they reject resurrection. They reject that there will be accountability. What's the purpose then? Just live and die? Or live and come back as a Hindus or Buddhist, they say, you live and you come back as a, as a snake or a cow. Who wants to live to do? come back as a snake? <laughs> or come back as a spider? Allah, yani, is this what you're looking for? Forward to? To come back and be a spider? And he says, what is their purpose? What is their dhikr anyway? Where is their adhkar that they do? One time I was just passing by, there was a restaurant, and at the top they had a separate room where some Buddhists were doing their ibadah. I just looked inside just to see what they're doing. I found it strange. Just to see what they're doing, they got a little triangle, and they're hitting the triangle, thing, like making the, that you know sound with the metal and metal. Hit. And that is the dhikr. SubhanAllah, look what Allah has given us. SubhanAllah, alhamdulillah, they got the, the thing, <laughs> the triangle. What is this? And then they're saying something, hum, hum. <laughs> In Arabic, you know what hum means? It means distress. <laughs> Prophet ﷺ would seek refuge from al hum. Allahumma ni adu bika min al hum. Ah, Allah keep us away, yani keep us away, protected from al hum, distress and sadness. Eh, hey Allah, because this shaitan comes through three ways. Through extreme happiness, as Ibn al-Qayyim Muhammad says, extreme uh, happiness, extreme sadness, and anger. Extreme sadness, a person is so sad, he comes and tries to <laughs> lead him astray while he's sad. Extreme happiness, yes, a person may end up doing haram while he's happy. Naam, and the, uh, not all people are happy to do haram, of course, of course not, but some people, they go overboard and exaggerate in their happiness. And the third one is anger. Because you sometimes lose your control. So they're saying, Alhamdulillah, Allah gave us this car. It's so beautiful. And it's a car morning and a car in the evening. And you teach your children this. You teach your children this so that they can also protect themselves. Because a lot of people go astray. 
people go astray and we need Allah's guidance, we need His help in, to worship Him correctly. May Allah forgive us our shortcomings and make us of those who remember Him much. And I think in London is sunrise, but in Manchester I don't know. That was my alarm. Sorry. That's for what? Sunrise. That's just sunrise. Yeah. Yeah, so inshallah, as the sun goes up, we will all get inshallah reward for Hajj. Inshallah, pray to the Taala. Inshallah. Is it authentic you know, when you the dry stick to your left while from Salah? The dry to your No, this is what I remember from the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, the, the, the dry spit, <coughs> spittle to the left and say, Audi billah min shaitan al rajim. No, this is what I remember. I, I do not know where the reference is, but I, I will have to check it, inshallah. Um, and letter three times to the left. No. 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 No forward, no, because it's a narration about not to, you know, in front of you, the prayer place. But, you know, if you do it, don't do it towards his face. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> you can do it to the left without the, you can do it like this. Yani, down. You can do it like this. Yani, on the left, down. But don't do it towards his face, otherwise <laughs> it will be, uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe he'll reply with something you will not be happy with. <laughs> so, yani, alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. So, sunrise has come up. So, now we, inshallah, just a few minutes. Yani, some scholars say 10 minutes, some say. Is it 10, 10 hours? Yeah, yani, just let it rise up. Because, you know, at sunrise itself, the uh, the sun rises between the horns of shaitan as the messenger sallallahu mentioned the sun rises between the horns of shaitan and this is the time the mushrikun they worship and subhanallah this this uh, uh, prayer you have here at 6 30 alhamdulillah it's close to, it's not that far from sunrise actually of course the best time for fajr is the earliest time Waktul uh, Ghalas or the time of Ghalas, which is when there is darker. Yani, but because obviously people work and people, you know, you, you take the maslaha of the community. And this is uh, even in England, in London, we pray what 6:20. Some message is 6:10. Uh, so straight after, is, uh, yani, uh, wait if you wait 10 minutes. This is what we used to see from the scholars in, who would teach at Fajr time in Masjid al Nabawi. Mm. They would not, after they finished teaching, they would wait about 10 minutes and then they would pray. Yeah. In the good old days. SubhanAllah. <sighs> Yeah, and, and all of us, I mean, yeah. I mean uh, what advice would you give us to maybe advising our elders or our parents who may not be, you know, on the way of Salafiyya? Yeah, that's a good question. Wallahi, yeah, with family, we ha we ha it's the hardest dawah. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Why? Because they know your shortcomings and they know you <laughs> and what you were, and you know, and some of them think, oh, you, you, you know. They have experience, they have life, they have life experience, they have, and you're just a young person, and you're just, you know, they think that you. Well, like in SubhanAllah, with your good manners, with your good actions, with your beautiful preaching, with your kindness, with your help, with your actions first before your speech, you know, inshallah, they, and your du'as, most importantly, your du'as, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften their heart to the truth. You'll be surprised. I, you know, for many years, you, someone may not have been praying in your family. For many years. But your du'as are so powerful. One day you, you come 
and you see subhanallah he's praying allahu akbar this is something and from our own experience we for many years you supplicate and you, you hope someone so is uh, praying and they're not praying don't stop your duas don't lose hope that they will be guided don't lose hope but you have to keep going and you and be careful because they elders especially they already oh, 50 years 40 years upon what they're upon you can't just change them overnight you have to be patient at least show them kindness and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that about the parents especially and with parents you should have <coughs> kindness show them kindness so if they tell you to do disobedience to Allah, if they command you with this, then don't obey them in that. But still be good companions to them. Sahibum of dunya ma'rufa with ma'ruf, with kindness, with goodness. Even if they're not Muslim, with kindness, with generosity. Show them the best of what Islam is, as taught you and me. And the Messenger of Islam said, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ لَمْ يُوَقِّرْ كَبِيرَنَا وَلَا يَرْحَمْ صَغِيرًا It's not all of us who doesn't respect his elders, nor have mercy for his young. Respecting the elders, honoring them. Some scholars even mention not to stretch out your legs in front of them. In your house. You know, not to sit in their place. You know, they have special place or they may have like a place where they used to sit. Don't sit in their place. You know, helping them in the house, if it's a, a, a parent or close relative, helping them, doing things that they will appreciate. If it's your elder, uh, older sister, for example, she has a car, she hasn't got, uh, uh, her car needs some mechanical work, and you take it to the mechanic, help her. And subhanAllah, you'll see lots of goodness, inshallah, in them coming closer to the, at least they, yani it will soften their heart, inshallah, to, towards what you're saying and what you're calling them to, and wake them up for the prayer. وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِرْ عَلَيْهَا Command your family with the prayer and be patient upon that. As long as you do what you ha- what's upon you. And inshallah, the reason why we, as Shaykh Abdul Zim Baz said, we advise our families is that we want to protect ourselves as well. Because when you advise them, imagine the whole house you've been advising them to for the Fajr prayer, for example, which seems to be difficult on, on some of the uh, people, some of the young as well. Young, like you know, 10 years old, maybe, not 10, but maybe um, the, uh, 16. You know, and they can't lift the covers off their beds. And they, you're supposed to be you for that age, supposed to be strong. Mm-hmm. SubhanAllah, you see a lot of elders, they're 60, 50, and they are in the front row in the masjid. You know, and that comes from the dhikr of Allah. That comes from the dhikr of Allah. Because the Prophet said, we taught Fatima, عنها, when she asked him for يعني, uh, a maid to help her during the day, he said, say in the night before you sleep. And he mentioned the adhkar. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Wa la ilallah. Allah. Yani say the adhkar this night. And then that will help you. Give you strength for the day. Mm-hmm. So. Yani advising our family members. Is important to protect ourselves as well. Because one day they will wake you up. When you forget. When you oversleep. Because it happens. So you have to be very patient. And very careful. With the elders, and you have, you know, that that requires a lot of um, a lot of patience, a lot of kindness, generosity, and du'as. So important du'as. No, and the young as well, rahmah for them. Look at the example of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He even, yani he would treat everyone equally. Yani in terms of the, uh, the those who he knew and those who didn't know, he gave him their rights. And there were people who were noble, and there were people who were uh, poor, and he gave each one their time and their rights. He looked out for the widows in the community to get to help the widows, the orphans in the community. Islam is comprehensive. 
is not just يعني, uh, you, 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 you save yourself. No, Islam is you look around, you see who's around you. So in Manchester, for example, it's nice if, the, if there is knowledge of the who the widows are that need help, who the orphans are. Or, يعني, Alhamdulillah, what I see here is, is khair, Allah mubarak, because you have a community. Inshallah, is one of the best communities. And what, you know, and usually somebody from outside coming can see a lot of things which is khair. And you know, you have the schooling, you have the. So, this is all khair. You have your activities for your children, this is khair. Also, it's good to have activities for the elders as well. <laughs> what the brothers did in Slough, they, uh, they sometimes make an, an evening for elders where they bring them coffee, tea. You know, the elders, they like to talk and discuss life and share their experience and share their. So, give them that, that, that evening for themselves to get together. And give them that, you know, this is a nice thing, nice thing that the brothers did, mashallah. Um, and uh, obviously, times of Eid is khair. Obviously, now with the social distancing, it's not as easy as before. Wallahu a'lam. We can learn from each other as well, you know. Each community has some benefits that they can give the others. So may Allah accept you, ikhwan. Allahu akbar.